Welcome back and in this fourth part of this video series I want to cover how a domain is registered. So what entities are involved and exactly how this new domain is integrated with DNS. So let's jump in and get started. The process of registering a domain includes a few key entities. First, the person registering the domain. Secondly, the domain registrar, and examples of this might include Route 53 or Hover. Next is the DNS hosting provider. Examples again include Route 53 or Hover. We have the TLD registry. In the case for the .com TLD, this is VeriSign. And then finally, the .com TLD zone, managed by the same entity. Now, one really important and often confusing element to this is the difference between the registrar and the DNS hosting provider. These are different things, different functions. The registrar has one function, to let you purchase domains, and to allow this they have a relationship with the TLD registry for many top level domains. You might use Hover for example to purchase .com domains, .io domains, .org domains and so on. And for each of these they will communicate with a different TLD registry. So the registrar lets you register, i.e. purchase domains. A DNS hosting provider, they operate DNS name servers, which can host DNS zones, and they allow you to manage the content of those zones. Now why this is confusing is that some companies are only registrars, some companies are only DNS hosting providers, but some, like Hover and Route 53, can do both. If you know AWS, if you work with the Route 53 registered domains area of the console, then this is the domain registrar function. If you work in the hosted zones area, this is the DNS hosting provider area. Try and think of them as two separate things, because it makes the explanation of domain registration much more logical. Step number one in the domain registration process, assuming the domain is available, is that we pay for the domain via the domain registrar. Examples include GoDaddy, Route 53, Hover and many more. It's at this point that we're going to need a DNS zone for the domain being registered, and this zone needs to be hosted on some DNS name servers. So if the DNS hosting provider is the same company as the registrar, a zone is created and hosted automatically. If it's a different company, you'll be asked for the name server information where the zone is hosted already, and this has to be configured separately. So at this point, we have a domain being registered, we have a DNS zone ready to go, hosted on some name servers, and we have all of the networking information for those name servers. So next, the registrar communicates this to the registry for the TLD. In the case of the .com TLD, this is VeriSign. Now next, VeriSign, assuming everything is good, they add all of those details to the .com TLD zone, and at this point, the domain is live. For a domain to be live, the name servers which host the zone need to be pointed at from the relevant TLD zone. If this zone ever changes, for example if it's moved to different name servers, the entries in the TLD, so the NS records pointing at the name servers for this domain, they need to be changed. And this is how a domain is registered. The key point really is to understand the two different roles, the domain registrar who register the domain with the registry and the hosting provider who host the zone for the domain on name servers. Many companies do both but they are conceptually different. At this point thanks for watching, that's everything I wanted to cover about registering a domain so go ahead and complete this video and when you're ready I'll look forward to you joining me in the next.